Yes, hello, welcome to On The Bench. I'm delighted to be part of the brand new series of the sports show that brings you the latest news from across your local region. Well, in the show tonight, we're delving into the world of lacrosse. Not only have we sent our camera crew over the bridge to catch up with the whole lacrosse team, we're also delighted to have their founder, Gareth Cornelius, joining us in the studio tonight. Gareth, hello there. Hi, Rob. Alongside him also, we've got our new pundit for this series, Daniel Barker. Daniel, welcome to you as well. Hi, Rob. So, Gareth, first of all, how did a lad from Manchester get involved in lacrosse? Uh, well, my uncle started me off playing the game to begin with when I was around 10 years old. Uh, he always wanted a nephew or niece to play the game and he picked on me. Um, played it for a little while, then picked up rugby union. Uh, and then when I started at university, I started playing lacrosse again. And um, then I've been heavily involved since I was about 21, so the past eight years of a lot of lacrosse, really. Any parallels to be drawn between rugby union and lacrosse? Uh, the physicality is definitely the same. Um, it's quite a tough sport. Uh, the difference is that in lacrosse, when you're running, you're getting hit by a metal stick, not by someone trying to tackle you. So what was the state of play when you started then? How many teams were there around? Uh, the nearest team to this region was actually probably in Sheffield or Leeds. Um, so there was no clubs around this area, barely even any university lacrosse. Um, but now there's Hull, there's Lincoln, and there's more teams popping up all over. Tell us about how you established the Hull lacrosse team then. Uh, well, I started off with a university team, playing for the university men's team. And when I graduated, I stayed in the area and I wanted to carry on playing. The only option really was to found my own club. So with the support of the university team and a few other local people who wanted to be involved, we founded Hull Lacrosse Club in 2008. And how, what was the feedback? What was the initial reaction? Um, initially, we were only drawing people that knew about the sport, that already played the sport. So the feedback there was great. Um, it, but we've been trying to grow it in the community, get local people involved. Uh, and that's where the difficulty really lies, getting it out in the community. How difficult do you find it, juggling the roles of, what, committee member and player? Yes, yeah, so I'm chairman, um, so I have a lot of responsibilities. Quite reporting a few stuff in. Yeah, a lot of hats, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, on, I'm the chairman, so I'm reporting into the governing body, to the local association, to the league organisers, and then I'm also uh, standing captain when our club captain is not available. I help to run the sessions as one of the more experienced players, so it's difficult juggling that, but uh, I love the sport, so I'm, I'm willing to put in the time. How have you seen the whole thing change and, and, and grow as, you, as you've gone along? Um, well, I started off playing university lacrosse and that's where the growth has come from, really. Um, the sport has been targeted by Sport England thanks to some superb numbers coming through uh, the university sport. They're getting a lot more funding now from Sport England for university lacrosse and that's creating more players that are then going back to their local areas where they came from before uni and they're getting involved in the clubs and stuff. So it's, it's growing brilliantly just needs a bit more growth. Really. You mentioned universities there, what about schools? Uh, schools game, it's popular in private girls schools um, but not so much with the men's form of the game. Uh, we're getting there with a the pop form of the game which is a short, smaller version for kids um, and hopefully we can get there soon with a bit more growth on the boys side of lacrosse. And you see it continues to grow? Hopefully so, yeah. And more and more so. interest on the way? Yeah. Splendid, okay for now. Gareth, thanks very much. Well, keen to learn more about lacrosse and its impact in the local region. Well, our production crew recently made the trip over to the North Bank to see the whole lacrosse team in action. Let's go and have a look. I'm at Hull University tonight to revisit the men's lacrosse team with On The Bench. Really cold here tonight in Hull, but I am joined with the Hull lacrosse coach, Gareth. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Antonia. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, for those of the viewers at home that don't know, what is lacrosse? Uh, lacrosse uh, is a North, America, North American sport originally, uh, invented um, on the border between the United States and Canada by Native American Indians. Uh, it was used as training for war. Um, it was renamed lacrosse by French colonists and then taken all across the world by Americans. It's been in the UK since the late 19th century. Uh, the skill set is similar to hockey or ice hockey, so it's all about hand-eye coordination. Uh, the difference is where the puck or the ball in, in the two forms of hockey travels on the floor, in lacrosse the ball goes through the air, so you're passing it from place to player through the air, uh, down the field to try to score a goal. And so I know we visited you last year, Gareth. Where has the team progressed since we last came to see you? Uh, on the field, um, there's been probably less success, less victories, uh, we've had a lot of issues with being able to get the same consistent team out all year, so that's impacted on our results. But the good thing uh, myself and the committee see is that we're getting more local players involved. 
Whereas before we were heavily reliant on the university, we are now getting more players from the local community, so that makes us a bit more self-sufficient. And if we wanted to get involved in lacrosse, or for the viewers at home that maybe want to start and join the team, how would we go about doing that? Uh, people just need to look for us online, on Twitter, on Facebook. They can search for our website. You'll find us, just search for Hull Lacrosse Club, and you'll find all the information there. Just drop us a line, get hold of a member of the committee, we'll give you all the details about training, about matches. You can come down and give it a go on a Tuesday night like we're doing tonight. That's great. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us tonight, and good luck with the training. I'm joined with the Hull Lacrosse captain, Jack, how are you? Very well, thanks, are you? Yes, I'm very well. Very cold though, isn't it? Although you must be pretty warm playing on the pitch in training. Yeah, pretty warm by now, yeah. What attracted you to the game of lacrosse, Jack? I think certainly it's uniqueness, really, compared to a lot of different sports that are around this area. Um, I think, you know, basketball, football. Jack, what are your ambitions for the team? Um, hopefully just to bring it, bring it together, really. We've always had a mix of players. Um, so coming from, like you say, university fed, um, directly from the whole university where we are tonight, um, combine those with all the local local players we've had coming up through over the years. Um, we'd like to bring them all together really and certainly try and develop more local players that are going to be able to stick around for longer and then we can build a team from there really. Well, best of luck with that Jack and thanks ever so much for talking with On The Bench tonight. Fantastic time down talking to the team at the Hull Across Training tonight. Back to you in the studio. Great VT there, I'm sure you'll agree. Gareth, for those new to lacrosse, just remind us of the rules, basically. Um, so the rules of men's field lacrosse is uh, you've got 10 players on the pitch, one keeper, three defenders, and then six short stick players. Uh, and the aim of the game is to get the ball down the field uh, and score a goal. Um, the rules are that you can be physical as long as you're trying to take over possession of the ball from the opposition. You can't go in all guns blazing trying to take people out. So is there a clear line as far as how? Yeah, there it definitely gets? is. Yeah, there definitely is. I mean, the in indoor version of the game, uh, which is called box lacrosse, there's virtually no rules in that. But on the field, uh, in the outdoor version of the sport, there are rules about how physical you can get. But it's still a pretty physical sport. Just remind us when the season starts. Can season end? runs from late September uh, until early April. Starts off with a league calendar. And then once the league's been completed, then it moves into the cup fixtures. Now, your results haven't been the best, have they? No, it's been a pretty poor year for us. Uh, it's probably our worst season for a long time. Tell us how it's gone. Um, the big problem is we've, uh, we've picked up four wins um, out of our fixtures so far. We've only got one league game left. The big problem we've had is a lack of players being available, not being able to put on the same team two weeks in a row. So it's just impacted us massively. What about players coming through? Are they mostly local? local yeah, we used to have around about a 50-50 split between students and local players, but mm. this year we're probably edging towards 80% local players and 20% from the university body. Uh, and our aim is to be 100% reliant on the local community, so the university just supplements what we've got. That's mm. our aim. Dan, do you fancy a bit of lacrosse? Uh, from what I've seen from the VT, it looks like a very uh, fast-paced, very exciting game. It's uh, probably not one to be for, for the faint-hearted, I'm sure. No, it is very physical, but, you know, People have come from all different backgrounds, from all different sports to play lacrosse, so you know it's open to anyone. What sort of image go. does it project? Does it suffer with an image problem? It does suffer with a massive image problem, and that is it was in a very popular teen movie in the late 90s, American Pie, and so a lot of people have a lot of connotations from that film, and unfortunately that's not the best advert for the game. So what can you do to try and overcome and dispel that? Uh, the first thing we can tell people is that what they see in that film is myth, and that's not the way it would ever happen. Um, we often sit there picking it apart and uh, we just tell them, look, if you get online, if you look for lacrosse, you'll find much better videos that give you a better representation of the game. And taking it forward, you're always on, on the lookout for new players? Yeah, always on the lookout for new players. We've actually just had a guy who's just moved to the area from the US who's going to come down and get involved. Uh, and we always get inquiries from the local people asking if they can get involved, how they get involved. And anyone is welcome to come and give it a go. We've got no preconceived expectations on people. OK. Well, we'll talk some more in a while about how they can get involved and keep those players coming through and hopefully those results. And we've got a quiz for you as well in a little <laughs> while, so look forward to that. Well, to take us into the break, we've got a new regular feature for you now. Each week, our own personal trainer, Jim Gale. Yes, he'll be demonstrating some handy workouts that you can try at home. Tonight, he's talking warm-ups. 
Hi, welcome to Jim Gale's Home Workouts. Over this fourth series, we're gonna go through a number of workouts to hit different aspects of fitness and also to hit different areas of your body. Before we get started, we need to go through some health and safety. First of all, always warm up at the start and always cool down at the end. Also, I'll be asking you to use some equipment at home, so don't use anything too heavy and never push yourselves too hard. Okay, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do a dynamic warm up. Start by running on the spot, make sure the knees come up nice and high, make sure your arms are giving you some momentum, keep them swinging, and keep breathing and keep the chin up so you can breathe all the way through. The next one we're gonna do is static punches. So you're gonna base the legs and punch straight forwards. Keep extending the arms all the way, and again, keep the chin up. If this gets a little bit too hard, just take a break. Don't push yourselves too much, it's just a warm up. Make sure the core moves a little bit and the shoulders swing around. The next one we're gonna do is ups and downs. So we'll take two hands on the floor and extend the feet back and then back in and stand all the way up. Make sure you extend the hips all the way at the top and halfway through, you're gonna go with the other leg. Whew. And that's your dynamic warm up. Well, welcome back to part two of On The Bench. In this half, we'll be chatting more lacrosse with Gareth Cornelius, as well as bringing you ice hockey highlights from the whole Stingrays. But before all of that, it's time to catch up on the latest results from around the region in Team Talk. Well, with Scunthorpe United losing 2-0 away at Crewe and North Ferriby going down 2-1 to Lowestoft, it was left to the two conference sides, Grimsby Town and Lincoln City, to try to bring victories to the region. Neither side disappointed. At the top, the Mariners made it four wins in a row, certainly the conference form side at the moment. They hung on to win 2-1 at Woking and climbed to third in the table. Well, Lincoln City also managed to bounce back from last week's defeat with Alan Powers' free kick securing a 2-1 win at Dover Athletic. Two keeper howlers, though, for Dover, it has to be said in that game. Meanwhile, in Rugby Union, Market Raisin and Lauf bounced back from defeat to beat Belgrave 5-3. Cleethorpes, however, failed to turn a 60-0 drubbing into victory this week, going down 19-13 to Worksop. And with no lacrosse fixtures this weekend, that's just about it from Team Talk for this week. Let's turn our thoughts to ice hockey now. And the Hull Stingrays played three away victories this week in the Elite League, having lost 4-3 to Nottingham in midweek. The Stingrays went on to beat the Fife Flyers, not easy to say that, 3-1 before losing 6-1 on Sunday to the Dundee Stars. Well, because all of last week's games were away from home, we're unable to bring you any of the highlights. Not to be deterred, though, we can bring you highlights of the Stingrays' last home game when they faced the high-flying Sheffield Steelers. Let's go to the Hull Arena to see how they got on. First face-off goes the way of the Sheffield Steelers. Misplayed by O'Connor. And he'll send it around the boards. And Laguie with the feed forward to Phillips. He's starting to try and turn the screw. Oh, it's gone all the way through. Brown wasn't ready for it. O'Connor sent it in, and I don't think he got a touch on the way through. And Brown is beaten in the five hole. And Steelers trying to provide an early birthday present. Here's Meyer! Look at that water bottle fly! And the Stingrays have earned that with their play in the last couple of minutes. Wah has emerged from the corner. This is good. It's Matthew Wah! It's a backhand finish! Matthew Wah, for the 34th time this season. And the Stingrays, as they have done so often this season, concede straight after scoring themselves. And it's all Matthew Wah bringing it out from the corner. And has the reach to go beyond Brown and into that far corner. Took it away from Jameson. Stingrays moving in menacingly, Osman trails the play, lovely tip! What a goal! It was Towner with the deflection. See this power play on the road this season. Hasn't been great. Less than 15% away from the Motor Point Arena. And I Sheffield for that matter. Hay with the big blast, side of the goal, it's going to be put in by Mosienko. Brown handcuffed by the first shot that was blocked in front. And it's Mosienko at the side of the goal with the power play response. Back to the side of Forney shooting and the net bulging. In reality, Forney had made a mess of it. 
and there wasn't a save for Brown to make. Little tangle at the side of the goal. Nothing much in it, and it's sent on goal, and comfortably taken in the glove by Eunice. Frederick is getting a little tangled up at the side of the goal. And this is Legui. Getting a regular shift on the third unit tonight. Haven't seen much of Phil Hill. Steelers beat out the icing and it's cleared away and then slammed in. Legui had the simplest of tasks. Like I couldn't handle that at the blue line. Noir takes over. Forney, the Steelers looking really dangerous. And Mike Forney has the Steelers sixth. And an elite league leading, 35th on the season. Fretter, Cone, Hay, Cone, goes for the shot, great deflection from Fretter. Out of midair, the hand-eye coordination required for that is top draw. And their team throughout this season. Wow, beautiful from Forney speed. The Sheffield Steelers are turning on the style, and the Stingrays have no answer. Forney, Petruska, wide open, and slamming it in is O'Connor. Cloud nine is occupied by the Sheffield Steelers right now. It's very much on track. The whole Stingrays have work still to do if they want to be in the end of season playoffs. Time is ticking down. It doesn't look as though the Steelers are going to get double figures, but I don't think they're going to mind. They are going to run out comprehensive and convincing victors tonight by nine goals to two. So a tough week ended in a win and two losses for the Stingrays. Let's get back to football. Dan Barker's with us. Dan, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, Grimsby, certainly, as I mentioned, the form team at the moment in the conference. Another win. Very much so. Uh, four wins in a row now. It's... Um we're looking quite sharp and we're all whispering quietly confident that about rumours of the uh, the title pony interview. Only whispering? Only whispering. We uh, we can't take it for granted. It, we've got a game in hand to win, which will take us three points, to within three points, sorry, of uh, Bristol Rovers. But there's uh, there's no easy games in the conference, as, uh, as you probably know. You've not mentioned Barnet, and Barnet had that unassailable lead, didn't they? Who'd have thought it was going to be whittled away? Exactly. Um, it just goes to prove that any really anything can happen in the uh, in the conference. I say we've got some games coming up, which on paper you could probably say we'd probably win, but nothing again. Again, you can't take anything for granted. Who who's key in this? Grimsby, uh, not Renaissance, because I mean they've been there thereabouts all season, but the consistency now is, is key, isn't it? And who's been. I part think of that? Uh, one of the main factors has been uh, Ollie Palmer, who we signed in the January transfer window from Mansfield. Um, it was initially on a month loan, but we managed to secure him for the remainder of the season. Um, I think he's started scoring a few goals, and I think it's beget, um, begun to show some belief within the squad and show that we've got someone else to see where the goals can come from if uh, Lionel John Lewis is away like, as he was this weekend. OK, all right. Well, North Ferriby, a defeat for them. Uh, maybe thoughts on the FA Trophy will keep an eye on their progress. Yep. Uh, Gareth, you don't get away from this. We've got this quiz coming up now. Mm. For you, and I'm <laughs> sure you're going to perform really well. You'll score high on this. Uh, of course, it's uh, lacrosse terminology. You should know what this is all about now. I'm going to give you some, um, some terms here, uh, some of the best ones, probably the most familiar ones. We'll see how many you can get, eight of them. Yep. Okay, so they mean absolutely nothing to me, uh, <laughs> although, you know, help me out. So let's talk about these then. Number one, cradling. What does that mean? Okay, so cradling uh, is the motion that players do uh, when they run along in possession of the ball. So they're twisting the head of the stick like that to cradle the ball whilst it's in the stick to make, keep hold of possession. It makes it a bit more difficult for the defenders to knock the ball out. Makes sense, I'll give you that one. Number two, cutting. Uh, cutting is a move that attackers would do to try and create space when attacking. Uh, so in a general setup, some of the attack players will stand away from the goal and the cutters will look to cut through through the defence to try and look for a pass to, look, to create a goal scoring opportunity. Sounds convincing. Uh, quickly then, foul out. Uh, foul out is probably uh, more of an American term over here. We call it an expulsion. So you're limited to five personal penalties in a game as a player. Uh, once you hit five, that's it. You're okay. expelled from the game. You're out of the match. Frying pan. Never heard of that one, no. <laughs> Goose it. Uh, Gooset, uh, that's a favourite of our captain, Jack, actually. He, um, he shouts Gooset quite a lot. So when the ball gets stuck underneath your feet, you goose it out, move it away from yourself as much as possible to try and get yourself some space to pick it up or for a teammate to pick it up for Mary you. Mary Gate. I haven't got a clue. Popcorn. 
No, no, I won't either. All right, it's going well. <laughs> long pole. Uh, long pole. So there's two types of stick that um, are used by the outfield players in the game. There's a short, short stick, which is three foot in length, used by the attackers and midfielders. And a long pole is what I use as a defender, which is six foot in length to give you more uh, distance between you and the attackers and also as a bit more of a weapon to, okay. to push them back. Goodness knows how many he scored. <laughs> it sounded pretty convincing. Any, any favourite ones of yours? Any uh, favourite phrases? No, no, not particularly. No, no. There's one that uh, when you hit someone's stick out of your hand, out of their hand, well, as a defender, uh, it does get a shout of yard sale quite a lot, which is a bit of an Americanism. Um, but in training, whenever it happens, it gets a great response and hypes the team up a bit. Okay, splendid. Well, back to discussion now on uh, lacrosse. Uh, earlier in the VT, you mentioned that it was originally uh, used as a training for war. I found that quite hard to believe. Yeah, so it was uh, founded by uh, Native American Indians, uh, mainly uh, the Iroquois Nation, which is six states that uh, straddle the US-Canada border in the, uh, in the northeast of America. And uh, it was really called Bagataway. Uh, that's the original name for it. That's the Native American name for it. And it was used as a training for war. Um, but French colonists came in, they recognised the sticks of looking like the crosses carried by bishops into, into cathedrals and stuff, and it became lacrosse, uh, and that's where the new name came from. And then as Americans travelled, just like Brits took cricket and football and rugby across the world, Americans took lacrosse with them. How popular is it now, here, um, and locally as well? Locally, there's ourselves and Lincoln, so we have a little bit of a Humber derby twice a year. Sounds good. Uh, it gets a bit tasty, that game. Um, in the Yorkshire region, into which both clubs fall as a, as a body representing us, uh, there's teams in Sheffield and Leeds, Newcastle, Nottingham, Loughborough. Uh, nationally, uh, the game is strong in Greater Manchester, it always has been, uh, but there's almost 55 clubs uh, around the country now, spread out far and wide from all the way down in Falmouth, all the way up to Newcastle. Uh, and the game's also starting to grow a little bit more in Wales and Scotland. Can't help remembering you mentioned about rugby union. It, it is a pre pretty rough game, isn't it? We mentioned the parallels between rugby and Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, very rough. Where have uh, you got a stick physical. involved? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a very physical game, but it's it, you can cope with it. it. You know, anyone can get by. We've got some players that are pretty diddy and they seem to cope. And finally, for more information, or if anybody wants to find out more, what do they do? Where do they go to? Uh, get online. Just search for Hull Lacrosse Club. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Uh, we've got a website, you can find us that way, or just have a look on, on the Bench's Facebook page and I'm sure you'll be able to find us there. Gareth, thanks very much. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, sadly, but don't worry, we'll be back next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Well, before we go, uh, many thanks again to Gareth. Gareth Cheers, Cornelius, Rob. good to see you again. And uh, as well as the whole Stingrays for bringing us all the latest highlights, uh, thank you to Dan as well. Thank you. Dan Barker, good to see you. We'll have many more enjoyable chats. Thanks to you as well, wherever you are wherever you're watching. Don't hesitate to contact us on social media with your comments and views, and don't forget to tune in to see both the Toms, by the way, on Saturday morning at 10, only on Estra TV. So until next time, bye-bye for now.